PDAPC, you know, the Siamese twins, you know, so, but however, you know, we have news for them and uh, our principal has proven to be a man of great strength, you know, strength of character, a man of great capacity, a competent man, a man who has the capacity to take us from consumption to production, a man of great courage. Do you know what it means to move from a leading, supposedly leading party to an unknown party just in eight months and he's been able to become the conversation even when the media wasn't called so guys mr peter obi keeps bringing talented nigerians to the spotlight honestly i enjoyed this debate this was like a debate between the labor party the apc and the pdp their representatives came to like debate why their party should be voted into power and i tell you i really enjoyed you know this debate because the labor party representative you know took this debate to another level so guys i'm going to allow you watch this video and please drop your thoughts in the comment section because i know you are going to enjoy this debate you are you are really going to enjoy it just grab a cup of coffee relax and enjoy this video each of these representatives went ahead to like ma market their own political parties you know they went ahead to tell nigerians why their party is the best and i want you to really listen to them analyze what they said and let me know who you think is the winner of this debate we must come up with a winner somebody must have won in this debate let me know who you think is the winner in this debate please drop your thoughts in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe to my channel turn on the notification bell give this video a like it's exactly 13 days to the elections and trust me nigerians are ready to go to the polls and vote for their favorite candidate it's been a very tough week um, for Nigerians. In fact, the past two weeks have been very tough for Nigerians. Uh, from the first scarcity to Naira scarcity, uh, it looks like it's getting better because I, I did notice that the queues are not as long when it comes to getting fill. Uh, but we just hope that the federal government will get on top of this and really just solve this even before the election. Uh, the big question on everybody's mind is who is going to be the messiah who is going to be the hero uh, which candidates can truly get nigeria out of the place where we currently are to a place where we ought to be which candidate will promote equity fairness justice and most importantly which candidate has ultimate respect for the rule of law with me in the studio, uh, I have Ababia Ka Ahmed, who will be representing the APC. He is a member Youth Mobilization APC PCC. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I also have a very active Nigerian representing the, the Labour Party, Maureen Kabrick. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I am representing myself, fellow obedience and fellow Nigerian citizens who are yearning for a change. I'm not a member of the Labour Party, okay. but I am a Nigerian citizen that desires to see change happen All come right. February 25th, 2023. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we we'll also have uh, people from other political parties join us in the course of the show. Uh, but let's get straight into the youth debate. So I'm going to start with Ahmed. We've heard all of the promises that your candidates, you know, keeps telling Nigerians. Um, what is the core objective or what do you think is the unique selling point of Bola Ahmed Tinibu? Well, um, thank you once again for having me. Um, and it's a great opportunity also for um, me to represent, uh, to present um, the superiority of the ideas and manifesto of the renewed hope um, agenda of Ashura Dibola Ahmed Tenobu. It is not a mistake that it was Christian renewed hope. Because um, if you watch what is going on right now in the country, and if you watch from where we started from, where this party, the APC, started from in 2015, you will understand that a lot of improvement have been made, but in the development of a nation, all of the presidential candidates, the front runners at one point or another, have mentioned that no single president can fix 
this country in the given tenure of either four or eight years or complete two times. So that is one side of it. But if you want to um, uh, check from where we are coming from again, I think it is instructive again to um, observe that these four presidential candidates, the front runners, I'm talking about the Labour Party candidates, Mr. Peter Obi, um, Mr. Bola, Ashwa Dubola, Ahmed Tinubu, Atiku Abubakar, and Rabi Ukwankwasu. It is, it is very, very important for us to, to check. The only unbiased criteria for us to choose and um, attest to the to the ability or capacity of any of the candidates to deliver for us to look at what they have done in the past. They've all, all held office, office, uh, public offices as governors and vice presidents. So I think it is very, very important for us to go back to the records and check. This is not about rhetorics. This is not just about a talking point. This is not just about public speaking. It's about the reality on ground, undeniable reality, verifiable realities of what has happened and what we are expecting as a result of the experiences we've had. Lagos State, for instance, Ashwabu Adjibola Ahmed Tinobu, nobody will deny the fact that Lagos State is the only state that is economically viable and independent in this country, as we speak right now. And it has everything. The, the, it has the hand of Ashwabu Adjibola Ahmed Tinobu on it. When he came into office in 1999, the IGR of Lagos State was 600 million. We should not shy away from these important issues. The IGR of Lagos was 600 million. He could barely pay civil servant salaries. But five years, uh, eight years down the line, he left the IGR at 5.5 billion. That was not a mistake. It was a deliberate action from the, 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 the power of visioning and the, power, the ability to think and put up a perfect team that can make things happen. So those, th that's one of the very important things that we need, to, we need to look at. A team player that has the capacity and that has the agenda to make this country great. So that is the, about the selling point of Ashiwa Dubola Ahmed Tinobu. Experience and his capacity from the experience of what he has done in Lagos State compared to other um, candidates. I think that's just about the best. All right, thank you very much. Um, so. I'm going to move over to you. Um, I'm going to get back to you know uh, the conversations around your candidates. You just stated some of his antecedents, the things he's done as the past gov as one of the um, governors of one time, two time governor of Lagos State. Um, we're going to get to other issues that really bother some Nigerians as regards to your candidates. But yeah. quickly moving on to. Um, Maureen, uh, tell me, the, the, we had the grand rally yesterday, uh, the Labour Party had the grand rally yesterday and um, uh, it was all over social media and um, this, this was the final rally uh, for the campaigns. Uh, do you really think, uh, with the numbers and the support so far, do you really think that Peter Obi stands a chance to actually really win this election? Yeah, we're going to win this election, no doubt, with the landslide. We have told everyone, you know, and we mean it, and we're going to make it happen. You know, we have been undermined. We have been underrated. We have been told that uh, we do not have the experience. We have been told that we cannot do it. We have been told that we are new to the game. We have been told that, oh, politics is not for, you know, the young people. What do we know about politics? Right from when our principal, you know, moved from the PDP, you know, to the Labour Party. It's been... Uh, you know, all of these comments, you know, coming from PDAPC, you know, the Siamese twins, you know, so, but however, you know, we have news for them and uh, our principal has proven to be a man of great strength, you know, strength of character, a man of great capacity, a competent man, a man who has the capacity to take us from consumption to production, a man of great courage. Do you know what it means to move from a leading, supposedly leading party to an unknown party just in eight months. And he's been able to become the conversation, even when the media wasn't courting him, even when the media was disregarding him, even when the media was calling all his, you know, his uh, supporters' names. But now he is the beautiful bride. He has become the force. He has become the conversation. The reason why the world is keyed in 
into the next elections that is coming in 13 days time is because of our principal mr Pichobi, a man who has great compassion and empathy he embodies the five c's that you look for in a leader a man who has offered himself a man who keeps taking himself to the people not a man who is running away from the people not a man whom we don't see him talk to us not a man who clearly tells us he's bigger than coming like bigger than the country that he wants to govern that's the reason why he cannot sit down and be questioned but Peter Obi has made himself available to the people yesterday was electrifying I came all the way from Abuja to Lagos I had told myself that's what Whenever the date for Lagos rally is fixed, I, Maureen Barry at Cabra, would be in attendance in that rally. Because for me, Lagos must understand that at the end of it all, their people are speaking and they are speaking loudly. And they're saying that whom they have had as a godfather in Lagos for 23 years, they're going to retire him and all the structures that they have around them. And not just that, we, the people of Nigeria, we're also speaking loudly that we're not just going to retire the one godfather that has lasted for 23 years but that we're going to retire the entire establishment of PDAPC that has held us in captivity, that has kept us in poverty, that has weaponized poverty, that even went ahead to steal palliatives that was given to citizens, not by them. It was bought by corporate bodies. They hoarded it. Some people had their faces on it, waiting to use it for their birthdays. So that particular, these two, these two Siamese twins, that have brought us nothing but pain when you said the past two weeks have been hellish no hero the past eight years has been hellish for nigerians there is no longer a middle class in nigeria it has been erased completely and that is why we want to erase the pdapc too so that we can begin to have a nigeria that will function a nigeria that will work for all a nigeria that when we come out and we say we're Nigerians, people will be proud to hold that green passport, as our principal said, at Chatham House. And that is why we spoke loudly yesterday. The atmosphere, and I'm sure Lagos, Nigeria, and the world over heard us, and they heard us loudly. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Maureen. Um, I can feel the passion and I could feel where you were coming from. Uh, also, uh, your candidate has a lot of youths and young people rallying around him. Um, uh, how would you say his popularity is amongst the older demography? And also, how would you rate his popularity in other parts of Nigeria? You know, there has been conversations around that uh, in the grassroots in the north might not necessarily subscribe to P2B simply because of they probably haven't heard enough of him. You know, that's just the propaganda that the PDAPC always put out. But our principal rounded up his rally yesterday in Lagos after he had visited all the other states, Abuja inclusive. And we all saw the turnout of people from the streets. Organic love, pure love. I come from Southern Kaduna. Going to Southern Kaduna was a last minute decision from what I learned from the party. But when they got to Southern Kaduna, what did you see? My people showed up because for so many years we have been disadvantaged. For so many years we have been looking for a leader who will come and speak to us and tell us I share in your pain. For so many years we have been dislodged from our farms, from our lands. And he took himself there and you saw the love. I have a supplier who supplies me products in Abuja. So when people say, oh, he doesn't, they don't know him in the north. He sent me four voice notes yesterday, day before yesterday, because I came in from Abuja for in house. I wish I could play it here for the world to hear. Deep words that he had for APC and PDP, PDAPC. And he said, Madam, I'm not sure I'm allowed to speak Hausa on the show here, but I would have said what a few of his lines in Hausa. But he said, We're waiting myself, my family, my community, because he comes from Sokoto State. He imports products into the country. Now he can no longer do that because of the rate of exchange. Normally he will go back to Sokoto during the farming season. Then when the farming season is over, he comes back to Abuja and carries on importation of, you know, the foreign goods he brings in. But it's practically impossible. He can't go to farm. Now he can't bring his products because dollars are not accessible to him. So what do you want people like? So there are, I tell you, the silent 
voters are in the majority. Uh, they are in that demography that you just mentioned. Because we live in a cruel country where people are afraid to speak up. So people who are in that democracy, probably because they built businesses or they just, oh, okay, you know, I'm still a civil servant, I don't want to talk, oh, this, this, that. But trust me, they will hear them loud and clear. They have right. made up their minds and 25th. Those silent voters, that demography will match to their polling units and with their PVCs, Peter's Voters Card, as we have named it, they will make their choice for a new order, for a new Nigeria that we have said is possible. Thank you. Okay, so Ahmed, I can mm. see that you've been itching to talk. <laughs> um, let's take it from our conversation before we move down okay. to Moran. You okay. mentioned some of the antecedents yes. um, of Bola Ahmed Tinobu. Tinobu. Yes. Um Some people would argue that you know where Lagos is and what Lagos is yes. was not simply just built by Bola Ahmed Tinubu. It was a collective effort of a lot of individuals. Okay. Um, taking it from that angle, uh, your candidate is part of the ruling party. Yes. How difficult has it been selling his candidacy, um, knowing fully well that usually a ruling party is supposed to campaign on the goodwill yes. or the existing goodwill of what the current president has done. Okay. But we've seen a discrepancy. You you know, initially, your candidates came out to say we'll consolidate on what Buhari has done. Yes. And then we've heard some people from your party say, okay, um, some people in our party are trying to sabotage yes. whatever is going on. So can you deal with that current crisis and okay. how should, why should Nigerians believe your candidates? Okay, well, I think we need to look at this issue again, like I said earlier, from where we are coming from. That is the experiences we've had with all these candidates. Um, where we are currently and where we are going, talking about their manifesto. No single party, no ruling party in the whole world would want to work against itself. APC took over in 2015. From 2016 up till 2021 December, the usual foil cues that we used to have in filling station never existed between 2016 and 2021. No party or no candidate or no government would want to jeopardize its chances in the year of election to now inflict upon itself this kind of crisis we are right now. What am I trying to say in essence? When this whole thing happened, you see there is this issue of the conspiracy that has been said from different quarters. I expected that while this issue was going on, a candidate, Atiku Abubakar, Peter Obi, and the rest of them, that have been speaking about standing in the, on the side of the people, will come out and stand on the side of people on all their campaign platform to hold the microphone and say, Nigerians are suffering. CBN, reverse this thing. Are you that prepared to do what you are to do to implement this policy? Have you done this? Have you done that? If they had kept quiet, it's a different thing. But they were, they were leading the CBN on. You, you, we all heard from the Kaduna State Governor, Nasir Erufa, he's better informed. He said some people in the government, non-state actors, were conniving with some other people who perhaps were aggrieved about the outcome of the APC primaries, and they are doing this to Nigeria. So the utterances of Mr. Peter Obi and Atiku Abubakar on the ground that they were saying Nigerians should endure Nigerians were at the filling station. It took Ashwaji Bola Metinubu and APC governors to even play the role of opposition on behalf of the opposition. They stood on the side of the people. You just had the CBN governor saying that, uh, that they, there's not enough paper to even print new notes after the advice from the... From the um, uh, uh, they have debunked uh, that. No, 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 no. I saw, well, it. Well, I saw it on your news. Yeah. Back no, wait, he, he did debunk. They say anybody would debunk anything, depending it. on how the they public said it's has fake said. News. Yeah. No, I depending it. on how the public perceive it. This was the outcome of the Council of State meeting. Now this went on, on and on. But I would just like to leave that aside and talk about where we are coming from. Talking about the the what Ashwa Jabal Ashwa Ashwa Jabal Ametinobu did. Everybody is talking about Lagos, CNN. Um, talked about Lagos as one of the best destinations for tourism in 2022. 20 destination, uh, 20 best de tourist destination. Paris, Tokyo, Los Angeles inclusive. That was not a mistake. Every governor, you see when these people talk about um, Godfatherism and all that, every governor, including Peter Obi, 
Peter Obi brought Will, um, Willie Obiano from Fidelity Bank as MD Fidelity Bank. He was never in government. He brought him and imposed it on the people of Anambra State. Willie Obiano became governor. A year down the line, they had issues. Allegedly, because Peter Obi, the money that he said he saved, that he saved in banks, was meant to be shared on this on the 19th of October 20. On the 19th of October so 2016, you know, on the 19th of October 2016, Willie Obiano came out. It's in the newspapers. It's everywhere that Peter Obi demanded for 7.5 billion from him as money he used to sponsor him for the governorship. Willie Obiano was not known to anybody in governance. Peter Obi refused to conduct local government elections seven seven years and seven years and ten months. Just he conducted local government election in Anambra State two months before he left office. That is not somebody that is prepared for governance at the, at the top level. Ashwa Dibola Metunubu was governor in Lagos State. He conducted local government election three times in the space of eight years and created 36 LCDA so that governance will get to the grassroots. These are things we should be talking about, not these rhetorics about somebody is coming to say, there is no, there is no substance in appearing in all social media, uh, in all media houses, churches or everywhere and start mm. talking about and start talking about what I would do, what I will do. Meanwhile, you were governor for eight years. What is the situation of Anambra today? If you say Tinubu was godfather in Lagos, has Lagos improved? The IGR of Lagos, that is just a simple indices for indicating what the progress of a country of a state is. The IGR of Lagos was 600 million when he came. He left it after eight years at 5.5 billion, established LIRS, established institutions, sustainable institutions that have Grown that okay. IGR to 57 billion as we speak. What is in Anambra? What has Peter Obi done in Anambra? Which Onita? One of the greatest assets that, could, that Africa can have. Yeah. What has it done with Onita Market? He is in Lagos. He lives in Lagos. Attend night vigils in Lagos. Does his family, his children, lives in Lagos? Anambra State is there. He doesn't do anything in Anambra. So this issue about we stand for Nigeria, we do this, and uh, when we come, we are going to do it. What have you done with the opportunity we were given in the past? Let's okay. leave little risk and talk about the German issues. Okay, so I'm going to allow Maureen to react to that. But before that, let's quickly get to Abuja, where Idris Ibrahim Kalgo, um, the national team lead at Tiku Youth Wind for PDP, is standing by. Hello, Idris. Welcome to the show. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So let's jump quickly straight into it. Um, your candidate has made certain promises to Nigerians. Why should we believe your candidate? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, we all need to understand uh, who Atiku Abubakar is. Without Atiku Abubakar, you and I will be having this conversation because there will be no more democracy in Nigeria. This is somebody that have fought for democracy for quite a long uh, years ago. Atiku Abubakar simply means democracy. Without Atiku Abubakar, we won't be having this election now because by now, maybe Obasanjo will, uh, will have still be the president by now. But because he's a true Democrat, he stood on firm and said, okay, no, Enough is enough. Democracy, four years for four years. Highest time you can go is two times. Atiku Abubakar is the only candidate so far now among the whole contempt, major uh, candidates who, if you check back, go back to history and check properly, you understand that Atiku Abubakar, in one way or the other, have helped the youth. This is the only candidate who carried the youth along. Uh, look at what happened uh, from 1999 to 2007. What are his achievements? Has he failed any one of them? No. Then you understand that, okay, he's a man of his words. Uh, it's so unfortunate. Uh, my sister, I think she's a poet. Uh, she reminds me of this uh, program where my kid tells by more lights. Uh, you know, Nigeria is not, uh, it's more than what you think of. It's not just about a candidate who believe in social media. No. We need a candidate who can stand for us. More especially the situation we find ourselves in this country now. Insecurity, bad education, unity, 
These are all the things that Atika Abakar is trying to bring back. So if you look closely, then you get to understand that he is the best candidate. He has the experience. He has done it before. We have seen it. He is not an amateur. And if you are talking about a new Nigeria, you should understand that uh, Peter will be is there's nothing uh, I don't I don't think you can call Peter or be a new Nigeria or something else because he just left uh, he was with the PDP just recently and how old is he that you guys are clamoring that he's a younger uh, he's a youth I don't understand so we all need to understand that it's beyond what we are thinking it's a sinking ship we need to understand that we need a, uh, a true leader who can unite us a leader who can bring back the old Nigeria that we know, who the, the same Nigeria that we live in peace. Uh, look at what happened. You can see what the PDP have done so far. And just compare between uh, 1999 to 2007, then after uh, when Buhari took over till date. What are the achievements? Everything is poor. So we all need to understand that this is about our future. We really need this man to be on the uh, seat. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, we're going to get into details. So we'll talk about education, insecurity, and these other areas that are very critical uh, to ensure that we have the Nigeria that we all desire. But that will be right after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is Robin Minds. Before we went on the break, we were having a conversation and it is the pre-use debate. And we've given the three political parties present here the opportunity to sort of you know, sell their candidates, uh, the Labour Party, PDP and the APC. And I still have Idris standing by um, at Abuja. So we're going to continue that conversation. Idris, um, you had said that um, your candidate is the best for Nigeria. Um, with the current crisis in the PDP, and he is being, uh, he's known as the unifier. Atiku is being called the unifier. Um, how much has that PDP crisis, the internal crisis, affected the concept of your candidate being the unifier? Thank you. Is there any home there's no any conflict? That's one thing we all need to understand first. And uh, if you look closely, how many of these conflicts have uh, has uh, Atiku solved so far? I think if you can count, if you can put at the mark of uh, one to ten, you can say, okay, he has solved nine. That's an excellent job. And uh, as you can all see closely, uh, more especially like the G5, uh, these are all governors uh, who are who are aggrieved one way or the other. And then uh, still go down to their states, you get to understand and then you see clearly. The people in the states are struggling behind Atiku. So Atiku is a unifier, yeah, it's true. And that is going to, uh, is going to uh, unite us as one, Nigeria, as we all used to be before. Before this uh, current government come and uh, put us in a hanky-panky uh, mood. Uh, Atiku Abubakar is not just only the unifier. Is going to be a president for all, not the kind of president that will just be a, uh, for one-sided tribe or one-sided uh, uh, section of people. No. Why am I saying so? He's the only candidate. If you go to his house, you get to find out that everybody almost uh, you see an Igbo man freely living in his house, an Yoruba man living freely in his house, a house man and a Fulani man, a Tibi man. Most of his domestic workers are not even flooding, no houses. So this is the kind of man that we want because he believes in competency. If you want to work with Atiku, deliver, and then you get the job. That's the kind of president that we want. Not the, not the president that will say, okay, you are my brother. Okay, you are my tribe. Oh, no, we're the same religion. No, 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 no. We are on a sinking ship. At this point, what we need, we need Atiku Abubakar, the unifier. Okay, um, we're going to quickly just talk about endorsements um, and how much it affects elections. Uh, your, your candidate was vice president on the Olusha Gunno Basenjo, and the former president has endorsed Peter Obi. Uh, how has that affected your campaign? Not in any way. We don't even see that as, 
uh, we don't even see that as a uh, as a uh, as a as a headline. He, Obasanjo have only one vote. No, well, people would believe that um, if somebody that he has worked with very closely does not endorse him, um, how are Nigerians supposed to trust his authenticity? Atiku's fault is simply because he stopped the third term. And he would do it not even for Basenjo, for even himself. He's fighting for democracy. He's fighting for you and I. He's fighting for our future. So that's the only crime Atiku committed. All right. All right. So moving on, let's 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 speak specifics. Um, currently, we have the highest number of out of school children. Our educational sector is really in shambles, and it's it's almost it's almost as if it's worse off. In fact, it is worse off um, under the government of APC. And this is not. I'm I'm trying as much as possible to, so it doesn't look like um, anybody's partisan here. We're talking. We're stating facts and we're stating figures. Um, unemployment rates has also you know worsened. It's I think it's about 33% um, with the highest youth unemployment ever. Um, I'm going to direct the question to you, um, the candidates, uh, the representative of the APC. But before we go to that, let me quickly introduce Shegun Ebitomi, who is a member of the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council. Welcome to the show. Nice having, nice having me here. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. So, Ahmed. Yes. Um, your candidate is obviously campaigning under the ruling party. Yes. Specifically, what will he do about education and how will he solve this educational crisis that we're having in this country? Okay, I would like to speak to that um, from two different um, angles, or if you, three if you like. First was what he did when he was governor of Lagos, the innovative ideas he brought about. He was the first governor in Nigeria well, you know, the PDP um, rep was talking about the tribalized um, all that. You know, Ashwa Jubala Tinubu was one of the foremost Nigerian in governance, in, a, in democracy, not the military era, in democracy, that has shown the highest level of acceptability and of hospitality to everybody, all tribes and ethnicity in Nigeria, religiously too. Now, in Lagos State, he paid the first governor to pay NECO and WAEC fee for all secondary school SS3 students. It has never happened in any state. It never happened before then, and it hasn't happened up till now. He also paid for jump fee for students who have passed their WAEC. He did that as a governor. That was unprecedented. That uh, innovation has been sustained up till this moment. Now, um, the, the kind of legacy he left in Lagos was such that the eight-month ASU strike that we observe, ASU strike is perennial, it has been happening ever since. So no government should come. Like uh, Mr. Peter Obi will go to every campus and say, ah, you have been on strike, strike. When he was governor, there was 13-month doctor strike, doctors and teachers strike in Anambra State. So nobody should come and cajole us about ASU strike, eight-month ASU strike. In Lagos, Lagos State has three universities as we speak. None of those universities joined the strike. They maintained their normal academic calendar, uninterrupted academic calendar, as we speak. That is a legacy that they left. Now, talking about education, what he has planned to do, especially as it affects the students. It is only in the manifesto of Ashwa Jubala Metinubu, the APC manifest, uh, presidential candidate, that you have something called the student loan. The Labour Party and the PDP do not have that in their, in their manifesto. Okay, maybe they redid it because there was two, there were two manifestos. One was, uh, was brought about in the Labour Party and in the PDP manifesto and Labour Party manifesto, the last time I checked, none of it has student loan. And he came up to break it down and said, well, if I become president, there has been issues of out of, of students who are brilliant, indigent students who could not get um, educa advanced education at the university or tertiary education level. He said there's going to be loan just like it's been done in advanced economy, like in the US and elsewhere. You are going to have a loan that will not disturb your academic um, um, uh, 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 attainment, okay. and afterwards, you have the opportunity to pay. There's one very important thing that happened in this party because the Ashura Jubala Ministry is running on, that, on the platform of the APC. This government did something unprecedented. In 84 tertiary institutions in this country, as we speak, 
under uh, under the minister of federal under the federal minister of works and housing something unprecedented happened they built internal road networks and infrastructures for those tertiary institutions these are verifiable i can name all the universities offhand right now okay. federal tertiary institution polytechnic all university right. and polytechnic these are supposed to be the duties of the management of those universities not even the federal minister of education but this happened so people should not come and just cajole us and talk to the youth or talk to students or youth and say okay because they have the largest democracy demography uh, okay so as to strike will not happen when they were holding when they were given mandates in their previous they were given man mandate previously. Strike happened. Okay. Asu strike happened. Right. Doctor strike happened. Teacher strike happened. Okay, so I'm going to allow Shego to react to that. Um, you are the member of the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council. All right, so uh, he had said certain things, um, but okay. as much as possible, we want you to speak for your principal, um, his antecedents on education, and what his plans are moving forward for Nigeria. Okay, thank you very much. It's a wonderful pleasure to be here and have some really cerebral discussions. Too much of what is going on is just a lot of personality, smearing, and co. Um, the, pro the truth of the matter is that the problem of Nigeria is the problem of all of us. We are all responsible for where we are today. And if we are going to get out of it, we all have to play our part. So the first thing I would like to say is the opportunity that His Excellency Peter Obi is, is not just as a result of his person, is more as a result of the process that is bringing him. I'm a student of process engineering, and the adage is that a process is perfectly designed to produce the result it produces. So it's not so much about the person of Peter Obi, it's, so, it's more about the process that is bringing him. And on the other hand, too, is not so much about the process of Asiwa Jutinubu or um, Alaji Atiku. It's about the process that, brought, that will bring them. Because that was the same way we trusted Buhari because he was um, somebody of character, but the process that brought him eventually defeated all of us, including himself. So, but speaking to the specifics now, when Peter Wabi was in Anambra State, the records are there. He met education at 26th, he left it at first. He was the only governor that was given the Bill Gates Prize for Health. He built the fastest teaching hospital. There are lots of, um, there are lots of big words, big things thrown around. In Nigeria, we believe too much in physical structures. Physical structures do not make people. I can give you an example. There are 30,000 primary health care centers in Nigeria. 30,000. One million children die every year. Two every minute. By the time you finish your show in one hour, 60 children have died. And there are 30,000 primary care centers. So it's not about how much structures were built or how much buildings or roads or this. The question is, how has the life of the people improved? I can refer you to a website that showed the Human Development Index during the Peter Obi's tenure. How health improved, how education improved, how life expectancy improved, and how he pulled people out of poverty. These are the four things that are important. If there are no structures in Nigeria, but every Nigerian is educated, is healthy, is out of poverty, we will have a great country. We could have all the best structures. If Nigerians are dying and they are not educated, we will still have one of the poorest country. That's what I'll say for now. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to connect right now with uh, Destiny Essen, uh, who is the senior special assistant to the governor of Delta State on entertainment. Welcome, Destiny. All right. Thank you very much. Thank okay. You. So um, your. Your colleague has spoken about uh, how uh, Lahaji Atiku Abubakar plans to improve on education. So real quick, we want to move on to insecurity. Um, we already know the state of this nation when it comes to security. What is your candidate going to do about that? Um, first of all, I'd like to say that His Excellency has um, a massive plan about um, pol police reform, state police. Nigeria needs state police because uh, I think uh, we are, Nigeria, the number of 
the citizens outnumbers um, the number of security personnel. So I think we need to recruit uh, more police um, men and women and um, more personnel in the armed forces. And I think um, that is what His Excellency is planning to do uh, when it comes to security uh, in Nigeria. And um, uh, to add to that, the best uh, way to secure our country is to make use of the locals. If you have um, the people in Yobi should be the policemen. They should be the ones on ground. That's the only way that uh, we're going to solve um, the problem of insecurity because they understand their terrain. But when you're running a federal police system whereby you, you send a policeman who is from Adama to work in Enugu, there will be a lot of um, crashes. So I think uh, the best is to restructure, reform the Nigerian police and others um, security agencies and you know recruit recruit as many uh, nigerians as possible conversation of having a state police in the mix for your candidates Again? destiny destiny i said is the conversation of having a Come state again, police i said is the conversation of having a state police uh, in the mix for your candidates I said one of the easiest way His Excellency has come up with one of his templates on how to solve these um, security issues in Nigeria is the creation of the state police, of the state police. All right. Okay. Um, Ahmed, same question goes for you in security. Um, your candidate is running under the platform of APC. Yes. And uh, we've, we've seen the results. It doesn't look like APC has done so much with security. Okay. Um, talking from the um, angle about what my candidate, uh, Ashwa Jabal Ahmed, you know, did in Lagos. Lagos was um, like um, the, the crime center of Nigeria, if you like, before, uh, before 1999 when he took over. But you see, he was talking about state police. It's just one of, um, or one of the, the instrumentalities of bringing about security or tackling insecurity in the state. There is a police formation called RRS, Rapid Res Response Squad in Lagos. You would think these policemen with the level of equipment, communication, uh, communication gadgets, um, and the kind of um, weaponry that they have and the training that they have, you think they are different from the usual or the normal policemen that we have in Nigeria. But they were extracted from the um, Nigerian police, re retrained, re-equipped by the state government, funded through the Lagos State Security Trust Fund. You see, these are institutions. These are things that are sustainable. That is why even people from the other party will say, if anybody even a secondary school dropout comes to become the governor of Lagos City, he will perform because there are structures on ground. There are institutions, sustainable institutions that works. So the Lagos State um, Security Trust Fund has made it possible for the state government to fund the RRS and they are everywhere. That is why it was easy. So, but one of the major things, one of the major factor of bringing about or curbing insecurity is the provision of job. Most of these things that are, hap that, that are happening, you, you can see Lagos State, um, when, when I talked about the insecurity or those, the miscreants and everything that was in Lagos pre-1999, most of these guys that were operating Mulwe, that were in different um, shanties here and there, most of them were retrained. Most of them were when absorbed said, from the society. When you said retrained, what do you mean? Yeah, they, they were absorbed from the society, given proper orientation. And some of them are even in these agencies, like LASMA and some of these other places. You know, so they were, they were given proper, some of these people were not just, they, they, they found themselves where they, they were as whatever they were doing, not because it was the, what they wanted, but it was because of what the society presented. But somebody came with a vision, Ashwa Jubala Metinubu, he came with a vision and it, it changed everything to what it was to, what it is today in Lagos as one of the most secure states in Nigeria. Now, what the party has done, this APC has done since 2015. Before 2015, a huge part of the Northeast was taken over by Boko Haram with their flags here and there. Now, security is a moving target. It's not just what, you see, it, uh, sorry, insecurity is a, is a moving target. If you want to solve it, you can't just solve it by saying, okay, because you cop this one. It will always pop up in one way or the other. 
now Boko Haram has been decimated. People can have other views, but Boko Haram has ended. We have another challenge in our hands, and that is banditry. The okay. kidnapping and some other things that are going okay. on. But the main issue about Boko Haram, this, yeah. this government has solved, and a lot of jobs have also, also been created. I mean, to pull people out of poverty. We're, we're running out of time. There's a yes. conversation I wanted us to have, yes. uh, because you did say that some people you know, were pulled out and they were retrained and rearranged. Yeah, we absorbed yeah. it. I know you had a personal um, um, but, um no, It's not in personal. I just <laughs> no, wanted no, to state no, the no, obvious. No, but like, quickly, yes. because of our time, we're going to move on to uh, Shegun. So, okay. Shegun, tell me what, what plans. Okay, as I said, it's more of the process than the product. Um, so, I was talking about that process re engineering that is going on. Politically, Nigeria's history is such that a candidate will come, I can do this, I can do that. He will bring a top-down um, strategy, dole out money as much as he can, and we will vote for him, and we will go and sleep and wait for him to do whatever he thinks he can do. But the Labour Party movement now, the obedient movement, it started even before Peter will be declared for president. That is the thing. So it's a bottom-up movement. We are the ones that are saying this is how we want our country to do. We are actually the ones running through Peter Obi. So, insecurity is more of the people's problem, not any one person's problem. There are two ends of insecurity. There is the latent part, people who don't have jobs, who don't have food, who don't have education, who don't have health care, can result to criminality. So, with a government that squeezes out corruption, like a Peter Obi led Labour Party government, and reinvest this in improving education like he did in Anambra State, that latent criminality will be substantially reduced. And um, evidence, when he was in Anambra State, um, he was given the safest state five years consecutively. The records are there. So he has done it. And the system we are bringing, we even enable him to do it easier because we, the people, are involved. So there will be, it is his data when he came back from Egypt about the police to citizen ratio that everybody is now quoting, including the PDP. So one of the things we've achieved as a party, we have deepened the conversation. We have provided content. We have provided context. We have provided data. So you now see everybody quoting data, everybody extrapolating, and it is all by get by His Excellency Peter Obi and the obedient movement being involved. So our security plan is comprehensive, is total, is both on the active side and on the latent side. All right, and thank you. With evidence. Thank you very much. Um, apparently, there are lots of issues that we still need to discuss, but we're, we're running out of time. So quickly, I want us to get to the final words. Um, Idris, so you have exactly just uh, 60 seconds to sell your candidate. Come February 25th, um, Nigerians, you need to convince Nigerians in 60 seconds. So your final words. Thank you. Uh, Excellency Atifa Bupakar has a master plan to go into bed and every Nigeria. But the youth, the women, the, the old age, this is our time. Uh, we have suffered a lot. Insecurity, bad education, strike all the time, uh, bad health sector, everything is running down. We are on a sinking ship. This is the time to recover. Nigeria has suffered a lot. We are tired. The youth are calling for a change, but not the fake change. The real change from His Excellency Atiku Abubakar. I am urging the Nigeria youth to stand with Atiku Abubakar because he promised to give the Nigeria youth 40% of his cabinet, which no candidate have ever done so. And if you look closely, you will see that uh, he's working with the youths all around him. Okay. That's a man who is truly going to stand for us, we the Nigeria youths, and everybody in charge. And right. that we should understand that uh, February 25th is a day whereby your PVC is going to be the new revolution. All right. Through Thank you by much. voting His Excellency Atiku Abubakar. Wazir Adabawa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ahmed, 60 seconds. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I think it is very important for Nigerian youth to 
um, take their time. Let's take our time to stay off the, like Governor Rabi Kwanko said, the Andrew Lever sort effect and the social media buzz. I think it is proper that we, we should understand that Nigeria didn't start in 2015. Nigeria started, or this fourth republic started right. in 1999. So, very, very important we're, we're out of time. We're, we're that we vote out for Ashwa Dibola so. Tinubu as Thank the you. next president. Thank you, Shegun. Okay, so... You, uh, you barely have 30 seconds, because okay. I have to wrap up. Um, what I would just tell Nigerians is that the matter to be decided now is not between three candidates. It's between you and your conscience. Work with a system that is driven by the people and is going to put in your precedent that will work for you rather than what we've always had where somebody claim to know what they want they want to do and they have never done that and they come and do whatever they think is best so right. the challenge is for the nigerian youth take your destiny in your hands take back your country okay speaking about destiny um destiny your final words I'd like to especially appeal to every young Nigerian to pay attention and to vote His Excellency, a man who is vastly experienced in oil and gas, imports, entrepreneur, and in every aspect. This is somebody who has been a custom officer and has been a businessman for a very long time. He's vastly experienced in every aspect of governance. Atiku Abaka is very calm, collected, and is a diplomat to the core. Nigeria at this point needs somebody who is a diplomat to take this country to the next level. Because this election will either take us forward or move us backward. Right. The choice is ours. And the choice we will make is for the unborn children, the next generation, our family and ourselves. Let's vote His Excellency Atiku Abaka, a unifier, a man who is peaceful okay, thank, to the court. Thank you, thank thank you thank and you, God bless you. you. So guys, you can see that Mr. Peter Obi is a movement that is discovering Nigerian youths, that is discovering talented Nigerians. Honestly, the way this lady spoke, you even believe she's from Kaduna State. This is a northerner. Honestly, she took this debate to another level. I enjoy everything she said. This is amazing. I tell you, Mr. Peter Obi keep bringing Nigerian talents to the spotlight, you know, discovering the youth. Nigeria is so blessed. We are blessed. We are so much blessed. The only thing that we are lacking is good leadership. We don't have leaders that have the people at heart. We don't have leaders that have empathy. And that is why everybody is embracing Mr. Peter Obi because Mr. Peter Obi is going to change the narrative. Mr. Peter Obi is that presidential candidate that is ready, you know, to engage with the youth, to speak to them, to listen to them. He always likes to like being interviewed. He likes to speak to the Nigerian people he communicates a lot mr peter obi communicates a lot you can see it for yourself he comes to the media houses on his campaign tray you know he speaks to the people oh my god this man is exceptional and we've seen that he's the only candidate that has empathy we all know how he went to the idp camps we all know how he sympathized with the flood victims mr peter obi is so different so guys this is it for this video please don't forget to subscribe to my channel turn on the notification bell give this video a like and let me know what you think in the comment section below thank you